facility traffic data, how many folks are coming and going on a daily basis. How do you capture this information? But more importantly, why is it so critical to a successful operation? I'm Jeremiah Johnson from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, where I serve as director of the Hill Student Center. UAB is a very urban campus. We're right in the heart of downtown Birmingham, comprised of over 100 city blocks. Uh, enrollment's right around 23,000 students currently. Uh, the Hill Student Center, it's a 176,000 square feet facility, four floors. We have 18 reservable meeting and event spaces. Uh, on a good year, we're hosting about 7,200 events. Uh, employment, we've got five professional staff and each year we'll employ between 50 and 60 students. So are we staffing appropriately? Without a doubt, one of the largest line items on all of our budgets is student salary dollars. So I wanted to make sure we're staffed appropriately uh, and using those resources efficiently. Uh, the students we employ at the Hill Student Center are by far some of the best humans on our campus, without a doubt. I love them dearly, uh, but they're not cheap. So we are now being asked to tell our stories in a much different way than we ever have before. Uh, our universities wanna know how we, as student centers and unions, are directly impacting our campus. How are we affecting enrollment, retention, all those things um, that we may have not been able to accurately describe in the past. We knew we've always made a difference, um, but we've not always had good, accurate data to help us tell that story. Uh, and traffic data is one of those things we can use now, and it's accurate. We know without a doubt how many folks we're impacting on a daily basis. Um, so it helps you start telling that story in a different way um, than we ever have. Uh, in terms of marketing and the communications, um, it really helps you know uh, where are your hot spots, what are your peak hours, uh, when are your are your busiest times throughout the day, what are your busiest entrances and exits throughout the day. Uh, a good example of this, we assumed an entrance right outside this office. There's a Starbucks there. Uh, we, our information desk is there. We assumed that was our busiest entrance. That's where we get the most engagement. Um, but once we collected data over a period of time, we saw we were very wrong. It's actually a first floor Southeast entrance. Um, that's our busiest by far entrance of the building. So what that allowed us to do was make some adjustments to our marketing and promotional areas. We were able to uh, move those to pivot. Uh, what are the peak times? What are the peak traffic areas? Uh, so it helps you with marketing and communication. Uh, obviously staffing uh, helps you with that. Are you being efficient, staffed at the right times of the day uh, with the right number of people, etc. cetera. Uh, and then just for funding justification in general. Uh, it's hard to come by every dollar these days. Um, so being able to really tell the impact you're having uh, with firm data to back it up really helps you fight for those dollars. Uh, it's all the same dollars all the other deans and VPs across campus are fighting for. So having that data to tell your story really makes a huge difference. So we wanna know, are we using those student salary dollars effectively? So you take a deep look at your staffing model. And to do that, you need data. And then you find out if that data supports how you're staffing throughout the day, or does it not? Um, so that's what we wanted to know. So first things first, we needed to start collecting data. Uh, and what we did was install a sensor on every single entrance and exit of our facility. So we got the system installed, got it up and running, uh, got familiar with the software we needed to go with the system. Um, and then we sat back and let the system do its job. Uh, and pretty quickly, we discovered some nice surprises. One being the number of folks who come in and out of our facility on a daily basis. We've been estimating for years how many folks we thought we in engaged with on a daily basis, but it's far more than we ever imagined. Um, so right off the bat, we start getting some really nice surprises uh, as a result of collecting this data. For this particular assessment, looking at our staffing model, I was mostly interested in our daily and hourly traffic. Um, so for this, I use what's called the day hour heat map. Um, so what you're looking at here is our average number of folks visiting our facility each hour of every day. So for us, from 4 a.m. to about 6 a.m., we may have a few maintenance staff, building services team come in and out, but our facility opens to the public at 7 a.m. So you can see how traffic picks up 
through the midday and then dies off towards the evening and we close at midnight every night. So what you can really begin to see very clearly when using the day hour heat map is the, the sweet spot. What are our peak hours? That was the question I was trying to identify first. What are the peak hours of our facility? What day and hour are we the busiest? So naturally we take this information back to our staffing model question. Uh, for context, our information desk, what we call guest services, uh, we have two students there all the time when the building's open to answer phones, walk up traffic, all those things um, that we all know information desks do. We staff it with two students all the time. Now that we have this data showing us when our peak hours are, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, 12 to 4 on the weekends, we're able to really ask that question, do we need two students there at all times? Clearly the peak hours are our times of most engagement. We've got the most folks in the facility. So naturally that's the most walk up traffic, the most interaction those students are getting at the information desk. But when we don't have a lot of traffic, maybe we don't need two students sitting there all the time. So the data was able to really answer that question for us. Are we staffing appropriately? And in this case, we were not. We obviously as well, we're not gonna make adjustments to our staffing model if it impacted the level of service we were providing to our students, to our community. Uh, and in this, in this case, it didn't. Uh, one student can handle the volume of traffic, the volume of calls, the volume of walk-up questions during non-peak hours. And of course, we still have two students there during peak hours um, so that we don't sacrifice any service to our community. So of course, show me the money. What happened in terms of adjusting the staffing model? Well, it equated to a $222 per week savings for us in student salary. And if you run the numbers out, that's $11,000 a year we're now saving without sacrificing any level of service uh, at our guest services desk, our information desk. Um, so you can quickly start to think of the projects you can do with $11,000. That's no small amount of money in anyone's book and it was all thanks to traffic data. So when you identify that level of waste that we were able to identify through the staffing model assessment, your gears start turning. What else can I do? How else can I use this data to find other areas of waste? So uh, we did. Uh, next step for us, we took a deeper dive looking at our building hours. And so we go back to the day hour heat map uh, and we drill down even further to show the actual average number of humans visiting our building uh, over the course of an entire year. So what you're looking at here is the average number of folks who came in. And what you can see is between 10 p.m. to midnight, we're serving almost no students or no community members. Like it's very, very little numbers. And this is over the course of an entire year. So what you can glean from this is that we could close at 10 p.m. every night uh, and still be serving the students at the same level we always have. So that's what we're gonna do. Post COVID, we're adjusting our building hours to close at 10 p.m. So if you start thinking about the utility costs, the staffing cost for two hours of every day um, that we're gonna close early, well, when you run the numbers out just in staffing costs, we're gonna be saving about $38,000 a year. Uh, hopefully to get some better numbers on utility usage and some other things to add to that, but that is huge. And again, it's not sacrificing anything to our students because the data shows they're just not using our facility after 10 p.m. So I hope just taking a look at these two small assessments I've done here at the Hill Student Center, it really gets your gears turning um, so you can do similar things on your campuses to improve your operations. At the end of the day, track the data. If you're not counting how many folks are coming in and out of your facility now, you're missing out. Um, so if you take nothing else away from this session, please start tracking your data. It will save you money, time, uh, and you'll be a much better and efficient department at the end of the day.